Welcome back to Only Black Kids in the Class. I'm Robert Sawyer. And I'm Mrs. Sawyer. And we are the only black, black kids, kids in, in the, the class. class. Oh, we, we say it in unison now. Sometimes. Am I wrong or have we been doing this podcast pretty consistently? Yes, we have been. All right. Am I wrong or has it been pretty awesome? It's been pretty awesome. Am I wrong or have you been enjoying it? <laughs> You may be wondering why I keep asking if, (laughs) am I wrong? That's because today's theme is, am I wrong? It's not always someone trying to figure out why the other person is the asshole. Sometimes people realize, maybe it's me. Am I the problem? Am I the drama? That's what today's episode is all about. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever recognized that maybe you're the problem? Yes. Tell me about a time. Wow, that was <laughs> that was so far off. Uh, a time where I realized I was wrong. You can only struggle. You're struggling to figure out one time. Yeah. I'm really, sh- I'm I would think you have so many to choose from that. Well, I I can't think of a sp- specific instance. I know um, what I'm doing at times that could be wrong, so I can I can say that. Um, for me. Sometimes it's hard to be see. accountable. No, I was gonna say that. I think I think I, I believe I do a good job of being <laughs> accountable. Yeah, I just mean you know sometimes when people are wrong, um, they don't understand that. But no, I think sometimes it's hard for me if I haven't experienced or dealt with something. It's hard for me to relate. So I may be wrong and then conclusions I will jump to. So I'm aware of that bias and I work to improve on that. But I do realize that at times I'm wrong because I can't be late. I'm excited to witness one of those times when you recognize it. Well, you know, I'm just not that I'm just not that wrong with you. That's all. I mean, you are right for me. There you go. I don't mean you're right with me, though. <laughs> yeah. <Gotta> slow down. <laughs> yeah. I'm right me, on the other you. hand, I am wrong all the time. And uh, because I am so often wrong, I feel that is why I so often present as right. Because I pay attention, take notes, make a mental note, and then I don't keep doing the wrong thing. So uh, it's way more trial and error in my life. And, you know, mm-hmm. you get older and suddenly it's like you know some shit. <laughs> and it's because I know some shit why we have another listener. It's so weird because they're not listeners. These people, whatever. We have another listener slash follower ask the black kids. Woohoo! Okay, trying to keep them coming. I wish we had at least one every episode. We will get there. If you would like to get some advice from the Ask the Black Kids, make sure you email us at Ask the black kids at gmail.com. Now, before we get started, I am a therapist. I am not your therapist. Everything we discuss on this podcast is entertainment. Entertainment. If, if you're really going through something, please seek help from a professional that you actually know. Your professional, your therapist, your doctor, your lawyer. Nothing we say here is valid. None of it. Am I the problem? Hi, Robert. I've been struggling with some dating challenges. So picture this. I'm almost 49, fresh out of a 24-year marriage, and trying to get back into the dating pool. And honey, the game has changed. I consider myself attractive, intelligent, and I've got my career and hobbies. But dating has been terrible. There's the sus profiles from Nigeria saying they're international businessmen, but really they are scammers. (laughs) Then there's the over 45-year-old player, and I just can't. Most of them have reached their 40s with no knowledge about being in a real relationship. They're either living with their parents, or they think just telling me I'm fine is an open invitation to the cookie. Ouch. They are utterly failing at basic communication. I'm going to say that one more time. They are utterly failing at basic communication. I'm nothing if not honest. I see the pattern and it seems to me, it's me. Am I unconsciously drawn to the wrong kind of men? I want a mature relationship, the kind that blossoms into something deeper. Am I asking for too much? I don't think so. 
Um, I, 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 I don't, I don't think so at all. I mean, I, I don't think you should settle at all, but I think you should have realistic expectations and it sounds like they have realistic expectations. Um, I would just maybe not search, just enjoy it. Fresh out of a 24 year old, 24 year marriage. That, I mean, that, that itself is painful. So I hope you're, um, I've either come to a resolve with that or working on um, getting out of that because, you know, a divorce is like a death of relationship. And I think you have to grieve with that mm. a certain kind of way. Um, and then I think dating, I mean, I think it's just different. I think it's, I think there's like environmentally different, like decades, like different technology difference. But I think ultimately it's just have fun with it a little bit. Don't put too many expectations on it. Um, and, and just try it. I, I think you might find people you don't want to have a relationship with, but you may spark other relationships like friendships, kinships, just have fun. Like, I mean, I've been with you for so long. I don't know what it's like to not have yeah. someone, <laughs> but, um, I would just, I would just urge to just enjoy the moments and try to find people to be a part of those moments and not try to label it as something. And maybe that'll help out a little bit. And this is why that was, that was very good. That was very good. And this is why they say women keep women single. <laughs> everything just, everything she just said is going to keep you single forever. Well, no, you're not asking for too much. Just have fun and don't, don't try. Okay. Don't oh, try. I didn't say not to try. Don't don't look. You said oh that. no, yeah, I did. I didn't say try. So try, but don't look. Try to be the best person that you can be. Jeez and you'll and you'll you'll get somebody. Be the best you you can be and you'll find someone. What do you think she was being before? The average her she could be? The well, worst she was searching her? Searching for it. I don't know. I'm not good at this because I've always had you. The dating pool is terrible the dating pool is god awful i imagine so for everyone so what i don't think women get is that the men come to therapy and they are saying the same thing why can't i meet someone like people are nuts people are crazy people don't understand boundaries people just suck so that's why you can't look for people you got to look for your person i would say be intentional about how you want to date, who you want to date, how you show up in the relationship, meaning 24 years is nothing to just be fresh out of and looking already. What healing have you done mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to really, but you, 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 this is what you were saying. What healing have you done to be prepared? Now, I'm not saying you're meeting shitty people because of you. It's your fault, but I would say make sure you are ready and that can be checking in with how you feel spiritually, how you are mentally, how you are romantically. What are your expectations? If it's just communication and someone that's reliable, you could probably find someone. But is that person your person? Um, Other than that, I would say be very intentional. Try to vet as much as you can. See, I agree with you to a certain extent, and then I don't. Because, I mean, I, are you looking for, like, another? Like, you're looking to get married again? Or are you just looking to have someone to share experiences with? I think it's different for for what it is that you're looking for. I think you should be intentional what you're what you're trying to achieve. I think you should always be intentional. But I don't necessarily think... I think you can miss out on some really great experiences, really great people by trying to define it and get back in another 24 year marriage. So I, I, I agree with you, but then I disagree as well. I feel like that's what I'm saying though. Be intentional about how you show up, know mm-hmm. what you want, know what you need, know how you have prepared or are preparing, mm-hmm. how you are healing so if I'm looking for a car, okay. But if I'm looking for a 1979 Buick, I don't know. I don't know about cars. It's terrible. Example. I was going to say, where terrible, are you going? Terrible for me to go. But if I'm looking for a specific make, model, year, color, 
Right. That that kind of lets me know, okay, don't go to this dealership. Don't go to that dealership. Be intentional with that. Yeah. But then also, to go along with the car analogy, if you know that this car costs this much money, you got to have your coins up ready to go. And I say that to say, if the person you're looking for is that stable, healed person, you too must work on being the stable and healed person. So we don't have enough information to say if they are That's or fair. aren't. That's fair. That's but fair. Everyone, regardless of your situationship, needs to make sure they are healing, taking care of themselves. That could be therapy. That could be yoga. Mm-hmm. It can be Journaling. drinking water. It can be all of the above. Right. Take care of you so that you know what it is you need from the relationship. That is the message I will always have. And don't forget, going back to the car analogy, there's a lot of new technology out there in cars. So don't don't make your scope so small. Oh, so you tell me to get a young boy? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Absolutely, I'm just get saying. A young boy. Don't 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 put your don't no don't, don't put your boundaries too small, and you're missing opportunity there. And technology has changed, so not necessarily young. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> Again, if you want some of this amazing advice, ask the black kids at gmail.com. There are a lot of people out there who are beginning to wonder if they are the problem. Yeah. Like to hear it? Here it go. Okay. Am I wrong for not believing my brother's apology after he confessed to me that he was in love with my husband? What? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> that definitely that definitely calls for reading that one again. Yes, please. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Am I wrong for not believing my brother's apology after he confessed to me that he was in love with my husband? I, ooh, 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 man. Yeah, that's that's some layers there. Yeah. Yeah, just some layers yeah. There. I think we're gonna have to read because I don't, I don't even, <laughs> I, I don't know where That's to go a with this. There, yeah. My twenty nine, my twenty nine year old female brother, thirty four male, and my husband, thirty five male, were friends since they were babies until we started dating almost nine years ago. When we started dating, my brother started treating me horribly and cut contact with both of us. He didn't attend our wedding, nor did he want to meet our children, seven female, five female, three female, 10 month old male. We only see each other at family gatherings and we ignore each other completely. Well, long story short, one of our sisters, 31 female, who was always in contact with him, told him that I had an accident and was in the hospital. It wasn't anything serious. I was just involved in a car crash. And since I'm pregnant, I was hospitalized, but everything is fine. Oh, no. But my sister still called to tell him. And judging by his actions, I know that he probably thought I could die because he showed up at the hospital and was terrified. He wasn't the same person who has been hating me for the last nine years for dating his best friend. He cried and apologized in a thousand ways and said things that I don't think is right to share for privacy. I will only say that he confessed to me what I have been suspecting for months. He is gay and was in love with my husband for years when they were still best friends. He confessed to me that that was why he hated me, that he thought that my husband could feel the same as him, but that as he settled down with me, he knew that that wasn't possible. According to him, he has been in love with my husband since they were in high school But he no longer feels anything for him because he finally understood that he doesn't feel the same way. And to be honest, I feel so confused because it's not easy to process that information, let alone forgive after so much hate and pain. Because he not only hurt me with his indifference, he also hurt my children when he ignored them at family parties every time they wanted to meet him. He also hurt my husband who was nothing more than an amazing friend and an amazing partner. Wow. And when I say that he was and is an amazing partner, I really mean it because he never hurt me and even respected our promise of celibacy until marriage. It has nothing to do with religion, but with a choice I made from a very young age to prove that he was serious about us. He did everything he could to prove to everyone including my brother, that he wanted to start a family with me and that he wasn't going to hurt me, but my brother didn't care. He just cut him off. 
And I don't know how much that hurt my husband because he considered him a brother. So I don't know how to forgive all that because he hurt me and my family. Mm. That day, I didn't say anything to him because I didn't think his apology was sincere. And the fact that he was in love with my husband shocked me so much that I didn't know what to say either. A few days ago, he sent gifts to the house for my children and a letter telling me he wanted me to forgive him, that he knows that earning my forgiveness and that of my husband will not be easy, but that he wants to try. My husband believes he is being sincere, but I don't know. I think that maybe he only acted like that because I was hospitalized, because under other circumstances, he would never have apologized. I ignored him, and the other day he called me after years to tell me that he wants to have coffee to talk. But I'm not sure I want to do it. I don't know if I want to risk him hurting me again. He has hated me for years, and I honestly don't think his apology is sincere. Am I wrong for not believing him? There is an edit. There is an edit here. What's the edit? She edited to add, I think I struck a chord here. LOL. But honestly, I find the excuse of, quote, family is family pathetic because for years I heard things like you're a whore. I hate you for opening your legs for my friend, etc. I've heard that every time I've tried to apologize for falling in love with his friend and I'm already sick of it. Yes, I love him and he will always be my brother and I want the best for him. But I, I don't want to have to have a relationship with him. That doesn't mean he can have empathy for me. Wow. Wowza. Wow. That's Yo. deep. That's real deep. That shit's crazy, bro. So uh, Whoa. wow. That's uh like that's a real predicament there. I don't think she's wrong for questioning his um apology. I think she has some time to like sort that thing out there. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of discussions if she wants to go there. Um, the only thing I, the only, the, the only advice I could offer, uh, I answered the question. I don't think she's wrong. You don't want to have that, that negative feeling in there. Um, I think if anything, the whole hospitalization for her and him coming to the realization that she could be gone and he never telling her, was rough on him, but at the same time, she shouldn't want to have that either. Not saying that that's easy, because he probably said some things that she's not going to forget. I think she should contemplate it. I think she should meet up for coffee when she's ready. But I just wouldn't want to end in a bad place if there was something more I could do to kind of fix it. He's kind of he he kind of he kind of was a real asshole, and he. He really did some stuff, but, he, you know, I'm trying to have grace for him, but it's very difficult here. I feel for her and her and the kids. The kids didn't do anything. And her husband was just trying to be a good guy. He kind of made his bed. And he can't just expect people just to get over it. And I agree. The whole family thing, family or people, she's a person. And regardless, that's her All right, are or you, not. Can you, can you stop? I thought you were going to say something. You can interject. Listen, if you're going to let me listen, keep talking, I'll keep talking. Listen, fuck him. This is this is fucking crazy. Fuck him. Because she was in the hospital. Uh-huh. He rushes cuz something might have happened. Right. She's been to the hospital 3 times. Correct. For 3 deliveries. First, yeah. He didn't give a shit about those. Yeah. So much so, he didn't give a shit to show up during the pregnancy. How you doing? He didn't give a shit yeah. to show up at the delivery. I'm not disagreeing. As we had in other episodes where people have to be the first to hold them. I'm not disagreeing. He didn't give a shit to show up postpartum. He didn't give a shit to get to know these kids. He hasn't given a shit to. He didn't go to her wedding. Yeah, it's her wedding with his with his best friend. That's right. He is a jealous bitch. But Robert, I think it's more than that. I agree. I agree. No, 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 no. I agree. I'm not disagreeing. uh, That's not on her. That it's more than that. He needs to go deal with his shit. Agreed. And to put that on her. To put that on her kids and to put that on his best friend. I agree. Which he was never a fucking friend. Because if you're not in love with me, then fuck you and your sister's a whore. What? What? I've known you all my life. Yeah. 
I, I've known you all my life. I didn't disagree with you. I don't disagree and with you. And suddenly I'm a whore. Right. That's real fucked up. She apologized to him for falling in love with his best friend. Yeah. I don't know why she did that. I hate you for ever opening your legs to my best friend. Yeah. If that don't sound like some self-centered bullshit, yeah. fuck him. I don't have grace for him. Why do we have to have grace for everyone? No, Has he you experienced don't have for pain? Everybody. Well, yes. He, yeah. We all have experienced pain. I think he but he also had the whole he he was not openly gay. So I think he was dealing with that. Plus, his friend is so, not. So and he was in love with him. So, so like him I said, not I agree being with openly you. Gay I agree. He has his the own right demons to, to deal with. No, he an doesn't have a right. Emotional terrorist. Nope. Nope. I agree. No, I let me, don't. Let, I don't. Let, let, I, don't with I think you. you're forgetting certain things in the story. You understand this is her brother. Yes. So she's seen him. Yes. And he acts like she's not there. Yes. He sees the kids. And ignores them. Which Fuck is this terrible. guy. Which is terrible. I, I, you know what? I wish him the, 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 the healing energy. I send to him the healing energy he needs. But he's a fucked up individual. I agree with you, Robert. He's I'm an not emotional terrorist to his entire family. I'm not And if it doesn't go his you. way, is it hard? Yes, I know. And I really hope he gets someone to talk to. Uh-huh. But that's the epitome of... Bleeding on someone that did not cut you. Agreed. I don't disagree with you at all. I do suspect. I do suspect, or at least I do wonder, because the way she mentioned the celibacy that has nothing to do with religion, mm -hmm. and then the brother is was closeted for so long, because she mm -hmm. said she recently found out. Mm -hmm. So I, I wonder what the atmosphere was for him to be out um, and I know that that is terribly painful, but your you being in pain is not a reason to just I emotionally agree. terrorize. There is nothing. He has to take accountability for him. There's nothing to dismiss what he did. All I'm saying is she doesn't want to have that extra baggage with her. Is what I'm saying. So she can forgive him in her heart. She that does can not do mean she has to go have coffee. Wants. There is no burden on her to. But for her to write in, for her for her to write in, she's contemplating it. it's heavy on her. So what I'm saying is, if she's thinking, second guess thinking about it enough to explore it. That's all I'm saying when she's ready. Focus on your pregnancy. I wish you the best. Yes, absolutely. Take care of you, your husband, your kids, the family that acknowledges you. Mm -hmm. Fuck your brother. I'm not gonna say that. Double fuck your brother. I'm not gonna. That guy's an ass. He is, and I agree with you. Oh my goodness. He doesn't wonder if he's the problem. But this next person does. Okay. Am I wrong for not wanting to attend my friend's wedding because she won't let my husband be my plus one? This has a very complex beginning, so I will try to explain it as briefly as possible. When I, 26-year-old female, met and started dating my husband, 40-year-old male, he was my college professor and also my friend's 27-year-old female. Well, my friend hates him because she failed his class three times, and she thought that because we were dating, I use quotes because we weren't actually officially dating, mm -hmm. only my friends and his friends knew about our situationship, he would give her good grades, and the truth is that he never did that, not even with me. Another reason she hates him is because she has spent years playing Cupid because she wanted me to date her fiance's brother, 34-year-old male. But I never liked him. We went on a date once, and it was horrible. He was rude and tried to kiss me several times without my consent. So I haven't spoken to him since, and my friend knows it, but she is still obsessed with that non-existent relationship. I got married two months ago, and she attended, but she was visibly upset. Of course, I asked her what was wrong, and she said it's because I only dated my husband for a year and a half, and for her it was a short time. And being honest, I ignored her because everyone can think what they want. But when she started saying that I've known her brother-in-law <laughs> since we were kids, and that he was, quote, perfect for me, and I knew where that conversation was going, so I told her I love my husband, and that he's perfect for me because he makes me feel loved, and above all, he respects me. Like, he literally quit his beloved job 
when we started so they wouldn't kick me out of college. She's full of shit. This whole thing. She's oh. full of shit. I, there, there is so much more. But she's full of shit. He yes. actually quit his job when they threatened to kick me out of college. Why were they going to kick you out of college? Because he was going to get fired. Was it because you were fucking a professor? Yeah, he was, was going to mm. get fired. Mm-hmm. Did he get fired? Yeah, exactly. She, she said he quit. Did he get fired no. or did he quit? He quit before Stop he got it. fired. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Sounds That's what it sounds like to me. What do you think? You're the first co-ed he was sleeping with? Mm. Get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Let's keep going. A few days ago. Wow. (laughs) A few days ago, she sent me her wedding invitation. And she only invited me and told me that my plus one must be a woman. Which made me angry because I wanted to go with my husband. And I told her, but she said no because she doesn't like my husband. And I would have thought that maybe she sees something that I don't see. But it's not that. It's that she placed me at the same table as her brother-in-law, and his plus one is a man. And I know this because while we were putting together the finishing touches of the wedding, I saw on her computer, and it pissed me off so much because she's crossing the line. I love my husband, and I know he is a decent man because everyone, my friends and family, adore him. That college doesn't adore him. No. That university doesn't adore him. No. He keeps opening them up to lawsuits. No. Yeah. Yeah. She is the only one who doesn't like him, and it hurts me that she does this. I'm married, and I'm not going to cheat on my husband or get divorced to date someone who doesn't care about my consent and treats me like I'm an idiot. So after thinking about it for days, I decided that if I can't go with my husband, that I don't want to share a table with her brother-in-law. And she said she's not going to change that. So I told her then, I'm not going to attend because it's disrespectful to me and my husband, And, of course, she's angry because, quote, she wasn't going to try anything, which I doubt. But, honestly, I don't want to sit alone all night next to a person like that. Am I wrong for that? This is terrible. First of all, they're not friends. They're not friends at all. Let's just just call that out. I don't know why people use that word so loosely. They're not friends. That's not friends. Let it go. That's that's, that's just just not friends. That's, That's terrible. That's terrible relationship. That's, that's but they're terrible. both kind of shitty. No, they both are. That's what I'm saying. They're not friends though. And the person who wrote this frenemies. I don't know what the hell they are. The person who wrote this, um, she's got some issues. Hell yeah. Why is she even worried? I, I like that. I I don't even know how you get to this kind of like discussion. She's like defending like her love for her husband. Like really. Oh, he's such a great guy. All these people but agree you know why. with her. Like, what? But you know why? What? Because you think it's the first time she's heard something about why are you dating this professor? Yeah. Who is 16 years. Was it 16 and 14, 16? I don't know, one of them. A decade and a half older than you. And the, and the reason why the friend don't like him is because of what? Because she's a dummy who failed his class three times. Or she's not the first student he got with. No, I think it's because she a dummy who failed his class three times. Mm. He probably wasn't trying to date the dummy. Mm. I don't know, but that's 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 a whole lot of um, pos- speculation. Yeah, that's that's that speculation. But she has great disdain for him, and well, she why? failed his class three times. Got it. And why is she so set on her being with her fiance's brother? It's creepy. It's giving obsessed much. It's creepy. But the person writing this is very naive. I would mm-hmm. say very insecure. Yeah. Because I don't need to have a conversation. When you say that my sp- my, my spouse can't come, no, all then, right, good. Then that means we were, I wasn't going. I was not going. That, that's it. I don't, I don't need to. But, but why? And when she, when she married her husband, the professor, She's mad at my imagine, wedding. I'm worried about somebody being mad at my wedding. on my wedding day. Oh, please. Making sure everyone else is good. What? Hey, you seem upset. Let's talk about it. What? <laughs> this lady. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't even know. Kind of not so. Yeah. I, the, not the asshole. But you need to talk to somebody. You yeah. Need, you, you need to need be on somebody's help. couch. Your you, friend you sounds all sorts help. of fucked up. Yeah. The brother-in-law sounds mega fucked up. Your husband sounds sus. Yeah. He even quit his beloved job when they threatened to kick me out. 
Why were they threatening to kick you out? He quit. When you're a victim. He quit. <laughs> oh, you're the victim here. Why are they th- why are they threatening to kick you out? Quit. Yeah. He okay. quit. Yeah. He quit. Nah. Wild. Everybody, everybody's kind of fugazi in that story. It's time for some advice. Okay. We should eventually come up with names for these segments. It's time for advice. We need like a jingle for everything. You gonna sing? No. Okay. This one comes from HBCU Confessions. I love my boyfriend so much. He's such a gentleman, but too much of a gentleman when it comes to sex. I love our sex life, but he's not comfortable with anything too freaky. He refuses to slightly choke me, isn't a talker, and just very vanilla. Is it possible for him to change? <laughs> I'm going to read that one one more time. I'm going to read that one one more time. I love my boyfriend so much. He's such a gentleman, but too much of a gentleman when it comes to sex. I love our sex life, but he's not comfortable with anything too freaky. He refuses to slightly choke me, isn't a talker, and is just very vanilla. Is it possible for him to change? I mean, it's possible, but it's... these needs to be conversations that you have with him. Yeah. Why are you on the internet? I mean, if if he if she says he refuses to choke her, which means they must have talked about it, then that's not his thing. And if that's a make it or break it for her, then that's that's what that is. But, but then she contradicts because then she says, "I love the sex with him," but she wants more. But he's vanilla. And she's not wrong for that, but I think the pressure to do something that he is vehemently against, I think that is a manipulation and a crossing of boundaries that it sounds like you two haven't discussed. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say she's forcing him. I'm not going to say he needs to change. They need to have a conversation. And it sounds like that's the real issue, that they don't even have the mechanism in their relationship to be able to have a conversation on such an intimate level. Well, she said he refused. So it seems like they've had a conversation and he's just not going to budge. She didn't hear what she wanted to hear. That's it. That's, that's the reality of it. That's what it seems like to me. It's like, she's not getting her way. I'm not going to tell them to break up. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to tell but, them conversations. Yeah. She can continue to talk to him, but if he doesn't feel comfortable doing something, he doesn't, he's not open to it, then he's not open to it. So she has to decide whether or not that that's what she wants or what she doesn't. I would, I would tell her, look, why, why isn't he open to it? Is it a moral thing? Is it a fear thing? Is it an unknown thing? Let me tell you something. One time I took a young lady to uh, St. Thomas, right? Caribbean vacation. And, I invited her to go, what was that, scuba? Not scuba. Snorkeling. Snorkeling. There we go. I invited her to go snorkeling. No, I'm not going snorkeling. Oh, man, you don't want to go snorkeling? No, I'm not doing that crazy shit. Like, oh, okay. Do you know what snorkeling is? Yeah. And then she describes, like, scuba diving. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, no, you got to be trained in that kind of shit. Like, I don't know anything about that. I'm like, we're not, we're not going, it's, we're not even going a foot down. Like, like your back is literally at the surface. She had no idea what snorkeling was. And when we had the conversation and I educated this young lady, showed her some examples. Don't you know she went snorkeling and loved it? I think loved is very strong. I'm I'm telling my story. That's very strong. This is my story. That's a very strong adjective. This is my story. Find out why. If it's a moral thing, you can't change his morals and you shouldn't be trying to. But if if it's a lack of knowledge thing, maybe a fearful thing, got to know where it's coming from or he's just not into that shit he might not be into that stop forcing your freak shit on him because mm-hmm. that snorkeling ended up with a shark in the water and i left you calm down <laughs> i did calm down. You, sound, you, sound wild right now. you left me with a shark in the water yet i'm here i'm like what did i do <laughs> battle the shark uh, she says she wants a freak i wonder how much of a freak she wants because It's time for Toxic Confessions. Okay. Let's see if this first one is freaky enough for her. Had a saucy affair with a work colleague a few years back. The sex was incredible. Nothing off limits. One time she asked me to defecate on her chest. 
Not really my thing, but agreed. Probably wasn't the best idea, given I'd had a madras the night before. Had to get a new job. Oh. Dirty game. Yeah, I don't. Oh, please don't talk about that kind of stuff. Caught my boss cheating on her husband. Under the bro code, I anonymously told the husband and gave proof. They divorced. The boss spiraled into depression. The company collapsed. And now I'm unemployed. No good deed goes undone, huh? Damn. Snitching. That snitching will get you every time. My wife stopped drinking two years ago after a night out with friends. She was sick all over the kitchen, cried and passed out. I put her to bed. Afterwards, I did a poo near the front door. I told her next day she had done it. That's why she doesn't drink. Not sorry. That's disgusting. That's evil. That's disgusting. That's evil. That's just disgusting. That's disgustingly evil. Oh, my gosh. Got dumped. She dated a new lad. Feeling jilted, I anonymously stalked his Instagram stories. Two years on, I'm still doing it, but not for the reason you'd think. He's got an unreal eye for a restaurant. Never had a bad meal whenever I've gone out ever since. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Y'all want to be friends. Y'all really friends. <laughs> yeah. He just doesn't know it yet. Yeah. Like their relationship could be over, but are you're they, still stalking. That's what I was going to say. I don't, I, is he still with the girl? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't actually matter to him. No. He needs these Yelp recommendations personalized <laughs> and unreal eye. About a year ago, the company I worked for switched to a four-day week. Never told my wife. Each Friday, I hire out a small office where I play football manager. I like to pretend it's my manager's office. I have conversations with players about disciplinary matters and contracts. <laughs> yo, how do you how do you lie for that long? Like, That's terrible. Yo, but he's if you think about it, he's not only not making money, he's, he's spending, spending money, money to hire out the office. Like what? Oh, oh, these are creepy. Mom died in September. She never left England. Hated traveling anywhere. Hated extremes of heat and cold. Hated foreign food. I travel a lot and take some ashes everywhere and leave them in places she would have fucking hated. It's a big world out there. And she's finally seeing it. Yo! Wow. Like, do they like the mom? What does it matter? That's just why you running around with the... With the ashes? Oh my goodness. Is, is this is this like a I hate my mom, I'm gonna do something she would have hated, or is this like a mom you never got to see the world? I don't know. It's a disturbed person regardless. Fuckery. My mates all think that my wife doesn't let me go to the pub anymore. In reality, I would much rather spend the evening with her and the kids Aww. and then cuddle up with a glass of wine and a film than listen to drunken twats talking bollocks about football. I love it. I oh, love man. it. <laughs> That's crazy because you know my wife doesn't let me go anywhere. <laughs> that my, your wife lets you do anything. No, it depends on the mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll just be like, man, I don't want to do that shit. And sometimes like, what date is it? Damn, don't you don't you know my wife got a, a function? <laughs> like they invited me to the to the end of the year party at the at the gym. Hey Robert, do you want to go to the end of the year party? I was like. I can't make it. My wife has it. But I, I didn't tell you the date yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> real story. Real story. That just happened. That just happened. Man, these people are villains. And so I guess my quasi question is, who's your favorite villain? Favorite villain? Yeah. Because these people are evil. Yeah. I'm going to take a shit by the door and tell her it's her because she drinks too much. That's just a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bad human. I I mean... <laughs> I respect the reason. So gross. I hate the methods. That's so gross. I hate the, me- but you know, she has a happier life now. Okay. So but you think. I, I don't know why you knew that was going to work because yeah. that, that's weird. Favorite black villain? You're going to laugh at me, but I thought about this. I know too. who you're going to say. Who, who am I going to say? Blackula. Oh, I didn't even think about that. That would give me nightmares. I don't want to talk about Blackula. I was going to say Terrence Howard. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, man? He's always the one. You know, no. No. Hold on. Now, this is a whole other conversation. What? There are two actors, very well known in the black community, at least, always the villain. One is Keith David. Oh, yeah. But Keith David, 
Who's that? Keith David is incredible. Keith David, um, just he's a villain. <laughs> he's just the villain. Okay, think of a movie. Something that you would know. Yeah, you know I don't know people's names. That's the thing. I can think of lots of things he's done, but that you would know. That's I the I don't know people's names. You know what's so crazy? We went to a film festival where he was in a film playing the villain, and he was there. And you you know when you see him, you're always like, Oh yeah, that's the villain guy. And oh. I can't tell you, but I don't remember that film. I can't but tell I was, you. I was thinking Terrence Howard. He always seems to be like the villain. He always would play the bad guy. He's Terrence. not always a villain. He wasn't the villain in Hustle and Flow. He was a pimp. <laughs> Pimps ain't villains? <laughs> Pimps provide a service to the community. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Some of these hoes would be lost without he a pimp. Was, he wasn't the villain in, in Some the Some of these hoes story, would be se. lost without a pimp. Oh. I don't know why that's bad to acknowledge. Look, oh, that is hilarious. Keith David. Oh. Also played a Disney villain. Also a Disney villain. Yeah, he does always play the villain. And you know what? I've seen I've seen lots of times where he wasn't the villain. Those don't stick with me. It's no. when he's the villain that sticks with me. He does. He reminds me of that other guy. What's your guy's name? What guy? The guy you had an affair with. I don't have any affair. Morris Chestnut. There we go. Morris and I have never had an affair. Morris and I. Yeah. First name basis shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, Morris. That wasn't an affair. <laughs> that was just. <sighs> Whenever she has to travel for work. Oh, boy. I typically will go on IMDb, see what Morris Chestnut is filming, see if they're filming where she has to travel because it's a thing going on. But we're, There's we're not going to talk about that today. On. We're not going to talk about that today. That's There's okay. nothing going on. It's cool. It's cool. Morris is happily married and so am I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's your story, and that's how you're gonna that's what you're gonna stick to it, right? Yep. I'm Clifton Powell. His name is Clifton Powell. Yes. Oh, yep. That's him. See, that's him. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. That's because him. he's always the villain. Yo, yeah. when you see one of these brothers on screen, yeah, on he his, did it. He did it. It's him. He did it. He always. Oh, did. he gonna do something. Don't trust him. If he ain't done it yet, he bouts to. Yep. 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 But Keith, I was. I don't know. We should. We should do a poll. We should like count. And see who's more the villain. Because them brothers. Wonderful actors. Just evil. Keith David is probably a saint. But because <laughs> of his roles. I wouldn't trust Keith David with shit. <laughs> evil ass. You know like some people like have like that one role. Unless you can't like, unsee it. <laughs> There's very few. You I have remember. to respect I remember people. Morris. I remember. Oh, why why you remember Morris? What? <laughs> Isn't it Eaters? You remember Mars and Egypt? Who else remember? Right, that's all I need to remember. Okay. <laughs> okay. Another day. I'm not, not, I'm not doing this with you. I'm not doing this with you. Who's your favorite villain? Or better yet, you know what? You know what? Who's the villain in your life? Ooh. And here's why I ask it like that. I, maybe two years ago, I had a client. She was telling me about her husband. Not, not wonderful stories. And I explained it to her. I was like, you got to understand something. He's following the program. They've been married like 15, 20 years. He's following the program. This is how it's been for 20 years. You started going to therapy. You started switching up. You're the Thanos of his life. You're the one that wants shit different. What? 20, come on, bro. 20 years you were okay with me being so without, mm-hmm. me being lacking. 20 years you accepted this and now all of a sudden you trying to be intentional and shit and now you want to switch it up you're the thanos of his life that's true and so i when she was like wait i'm the villain i was like in his story that's true it's all about perspective in his story you have the problem it's all about perspective. you're the one switching up so who's the villain in your life and our last story this one is Last good. Story. Dun, 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 dun. Woo, here we go. Am I the asshole for canceling the babysitter after my wife decided not to attend my work holiday party? Whoa. Whoa. I've got thoughts. Whoa. Because just off rip, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you would be the asshole. Why are you canceling the babysitter? But there, there, there's there's more to it, okay. obviously. Okay. My 38-year-old male 
work held our annual holiday party last Friday. It was held at one of those axe throwing places, which I had never done before, so I figured it would be pretty fun. My wife, 36-year-old female, and I have three kids, 10, 8, and 5, so we don't get out of the house for dates very often. The holiday party was planned almost two months ago, and my wife agreed to attend with me. I suggested we make it more of a date by either going out for drinks after the party or catching a late night movie. Okay. She thought this was a good idea, too. I also arranged for a babysitter to come watch the kids for that night. The day of the party, my wife got home from work and told me that she had a horrible day and was in a bad space mentally, so she didn't want to come to the party. I told her I was disappointed, but I understand if she wants to stay home. As I was getting myself ready to head to the party, I called the babysitter and canceled. I apologized to her and offered to Venmo her an hour's worth of our agreed rate, $30, to compensate her for cancellation, and she agreed that was reasonable. As I was getting ready to leave, my wife asked me when the babysitter is going to come. I kind of looked at her funny and told her I just canceled the babysitter because she was no longer coming with me. She got mad at me and told me that I knew she had a bad day and was in a bad mental state and needed some time to herself. I told her that I had assumed none of that meant she was incapable of watching our kids and that I didn't think having the babysitter come when my wife was still home made any sense at all. She told me to call her back and see if she could still come watch the kids. And I told her that if she wanted to do that, she can do it. But I'm not going to. She tried to argue with me about it, but I told her that I had to leave for the party. While I was at the party, she sent me multiple texts about how the kids were driving her nuts and that the babysitter didn't answer her calls and she needed me to come home. She kept blowing up my phone and I eventually left the party over an hour early to go home. When I got there, she kept arguing with me about how I was an asshole for canceling the babysitter when I knew she had a rough day. I told her I was not going to pay a babysitter just so that my wife can rest after a bad day. I told her she could have just thrown a movie on for the kids and relaxed. I told her she was the one who ruined our potential night out and that having a bad day at work is not a good enough reason to pay a babysitter $150 to $200. She still thinks I was an asshole for canceling the babysitter without talking to her first, and she's still mad at me for it. But I don't think that was an unreasonable assumption to make considering that there have been plenty of times when I've had a bad day, and I am still 100% capable of watching the kids by myself while my wife leaves the house. Is he the asshole for canceling the babysitter? I've kind of like changed back and forth throughout. I'm telling I Okay, me too. I think they have a communication problem. Clearly. I know they have a communication problem. And I think the bigger problem was he should have spoken with her about canceling the babysitter before he did. Mm-hmm. I think that was the root of the the whole thing. Because mm-hmm. it, there's a part of part of him that he's not saying in that post that was being a little patty and a little facetious. Like, he did that on purpose to me. I know what he's saying about the whole, I, like, the amount and all that. No, 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 I so think there's a little more in there. There's more context that we that we obviously don't have. Right. And at first, I was like, oh, I would have just, if she told me, if you told me you had a bad day and this was already scheduled, I would have just, like, run it. Right. right. Let the babysitter come. Right. But when he started talking about the money, I wondered, are they tight on money? Right. Think about it. He was trying to have a night out, meaning he was going to pay for a movie and and drinks, drinks or whatever and, stuff. and the babysitter right but now that you're staying home well shit like i'm not paying the drinks and everything i can see if it's a budget thing if they have had a discussion about budget yeah. and money is an issue like yeah. we tight tight right that's i, I was trying to do it but you know what we can't afford and but that still should have been a question that should have been a conversation it should have been a conversation for sure the cancellation why like okay honey i'm gonna cancel the babysitter then yes that's that's what I don't understand that part. So there now that disconnect is different. Now we have some comments. I think this is the key factor. Husband's intention where my family can save money. If they have money and his intentions were wife doesn't get a free day just because she feels bad if she's canceling on me, that would be different. Intention matters a lot in our actions. I agree. Here's another comment. Heck. If dad decided to bail on his wife's work party and then complain about having to watch the kids instead of having a sitter over the excuse of having a hard day at work, he would get tarred and feathered here. Big facts. And the reason why I say that is because I literally just watched a video last week and they were complaining how when they go out, 
But on a girl's night, if the husband or father of the kids is texting them how the kid is acting up, and they're like, don't bother me. You've got them. This is what I go through all the time. You've got them. Let me have my night. Don't harass me. And okay, valid. That's valid. You're an adult. You have your kids. Let me be. But she's an adult. She has her kids. Let that man cheat with his work wife. Ooh, don't bring up work wives. Oh, not too soon? Uh, I don't. So, I mean, she was being a little bit of a brat, too. Right? Um, because that's that's true. I, I forgot the ages, but they're like she could, could not have like too much. She was calling. He's thirty eight and she's thirty six. The kids are ten, eight, and five. Yeah. So you got a ten year old. You 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 figured it out by now. Yeah. So I, I, I she was just being a little dramatic. And I mean, if I, it's the intentions. If money is an issue in their family, yeah, I think that's very important. I do. But if he's just like, oh, you gonna cancel on me and chill? No, nah, then no, nah, then he's the asshole for sure. Yeah. We got a few more comments. And if it, but you know, honey, even if money was an issue, it's still gonna be a cheaper night because they're not doing anything before or after to cancel the babysitter. Yeah, and she did but, express having a really bad day. Okay, but. If my intention was to spend two hundred dollars for us to have a night together, yeah, and now I'm spending two hundred dollars for us to not have a night together, I can see now because I know me. Yeah, see, I I, I would have for done you, it anyway for you. So this is what I imagined you because you're like, and maybe I'm. Spoiled, I would have. I would have paid entitled. the babysitter. No, this is what would have happened. You probably wouldn't have gone because you didn't. Probably would want to go to do something. Well, well, well if we're gonna do that, I, there's no <laughs> way I'm going to a work party ever. Anyway, <laughs> at night, daytime, unless it's on the clock at the office, I don't have to do shit. I can just stay in the office and not talk to you. Then I don't right. give a fuck. But let's say it's something you had to. Right, there's someone you're gonna meet there. Or something you had some commitment you had to go. And I was having a bad day. We have kids, and you have babysitter. Pay you, the babysitter. You would have paid the babysitter. If I already had that, him booked. But not just that. You would have gone to the axe throwing thing and you would have brought me back like some kind of like dessert or some sweet. And we still would have had some time. I know you. That's what you would have done. Because you're you're a good guy. This guy had, I'm not saying this guy's bad. I'm not gonna, I'm not a group nut. I don't know enough about him. But he had a little bit of mm. I'm telling you, there's a world mm. where he was like, oh yeah. Didn't even think about it. There's a world. It Possible. depends. Possible. He could have been. I'm, I'm not saying there's no way he was petty. He could very well have just been petty. Yeah, because then he's like, oh, don't no, you call her then. I set up the babysitter. I set up the night. I set up the date. I did all this. You aren't feeling good. I have to go. I'm getting ready. No, you had enough time to cancel her. I had enough time to save our family $200. Mm-hmm. Listen, me personally, I would have paid the babysitter, but mm-hmm. it, it depends on the attention. Okay. intentions only answer here has to be not the asshole i don't know what the wife's deal is here but all of that is pretty inexcusable behavior well i don't know if it's even canceling on the work party alone from just a bad day already puts her in asshole territory all right you're a dick yeah sometimes you have bad days but you still have to show up for your partner and your family and i'm sure her husband would like to still use that babysitter money to have a night out with his wife it sounds like people are conflating does the wife get any time to herself versus date night. Yeah. And I don't know the answer to that. No. But I'm going to say all of this seems like communication. It's all communication. They That's, just need to talk. They need to talk. I it's agree. It's crazy, crazy. Yeah. That's unfortunate, though. It's unfortunate. Hopefully, she can feel better, get some time to herself. Hopefully, yeah. he threw some axes. And uh, I don't think it, I'm going to say no one's the asshole, but. It's possible you're both the asshole. It's possible they're both the asshole, asshole and they're both shitty. Because she could have also have told him that, you know, honey, I really don't want to go. I had a horrible day at work. It's communication for sure. He just had the babysitter come. I just need sure, to. I sure. just need to totally like. So I, I, I give her like. There's some. There's some on her too. Some ownership on. Mrs. Sawyer. Yes. It's about that time for us to get out of here. Woohoo! What's the theme of the day? The theme of the day is: Am I the problem? Oh. You might be. You might be the problem. You might it be. might be you. You might be. Don't be afraid to admit if you are the problem. Practice what you preach. Absolutely. 
Thank you for watching. We are Only Black Kids in the Class podcast. Follow us on all social media at Only Black Kids. If you want to get your advice answered, ask the black kids at gmail.com. <laughs>